Today I'm going to talk about the three most effective real estate team structures that top teams use to dominate the market and one common structure that might actually be holding your business back. This isn't just theory, it's based on real world experiences and results. If you want my personal two cents on your scenario, send me an email, I'd be happy to help. My info is in the description below. It seems to be more common that agents are either leading a team or joining a team and there are so many really great reasons why and some of them are simply that it's a great way to expand on business that you don't have the ability to serve. It's also a really great way to support and collaborate with trying to juggle the balance of everyday life. And on top of it, you can have people that specialize in different categories or areas of your business so that you can focus more on what you are good at so that you enjoy more of what you do on a regular basis because everybody that joins the team seems to sort of complement each other. And if you're joining a team as a new agent or as an agent that's looking for a leg up you really are exposed to so many more different scenarios so that you learn at an accelerated rate first on the list here today is the traditional team model this is where you have one team leader who essentially provides all of the leads all of the training all of the support to everybody on the team and then you've got a buyer's agent maybe a listing specialist of course you'll have a transaction coordinator and administrative staff, etc. The partnership model is essentially where two agents decide to team up and split everything right down the middle. Now, this team structure can work well in some scenarios, perhaps in a mother-daughter team or a husband-wife type of team, etc. But one of the challenges that come from this type of team is that if you're splitting everything 50-50, is there an equal contribution to the team where one person doesn't feel like they are being overworked as compared to what the compensation is. So it's really great to identify roles in this type of team structure so that there are demands on both parties so that both parties feel fair at the beginning and the end of each transaction or at least overall throughout the year so that there's a really good balance. And what I do find is that this is a very rare scenario where you find two agents that really, really work well together because there's usually one person that either pulls away or there's one person that doesn't want to keep up to that same pace or that same workload but it is a very very positive structure where you can get a lot more done with two people than you would with only one and it's more than what you would consider in terms of two people working together what you will find is that two people working together can get the same workload completed as what maybe three to five agents would if it's the right scenario as they say the whole is greater than the sum of its parts the collaborative group structure now this is essentially just a bunch of agents that have decided to work together and collaborate under the same umbrella. What the commission splits are in this type of arrangement vary widely depending on who's carrying the bulk of the marketing expenses and it depends strongly on how good is the brand that is being backed up by this type of scenario. I do see teams that fall into this category quite often and for whatever reason they don't seem to stand the test of time. This again is a very very rare type of scenario. I've seen it maybe a handful of times work very well, although it seems to me that there's always a push and a pull, again, based on who is top dog in the group and who's going to get the lion's share of the recognition. But again, when you see teams that work together very well in this type of scenario, you will see them become dominant players in the market because if it's five or eight solo agents that are doing extremely well in their business and they pool their resources together in terms of marketing, it makes their team look like a monster team, even though it's really just a bunch of individual agents that have decided to share marketing costs and to build a brand around that. The specialized team model. Now this is when the team continues to grow and expand at a rapid rate to the point where now you can offer 
specialization in a number of different categories and you can have specialized roles for a number of different categories. Now these teams are usually larger in size. It is maybe a traditional team that has outgrown what a traditional team would normally look like to the point where now you've got a lot of really great moving parts and pieces. Let me give you a few examples. You would have your marketing expert who was an independent dedicated role. You'd have a staging expert, social media manager, property photographer and or videographer, administrative assistant, human resources manager, customer support representative, training and development coordinator. So somebody that's in charge of training new agents. And then you'd have a compliance officer to make sure you've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's. Now I know of a few teams that fall into these categories and they will sell hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of houses per year, sometimes thousands of houses per year. Next on the list is the high hybrid model or the self-organized team. I actually ran my business like this for a short period of time as I was building the brokerage. And what this essentially is, is it's one top producing real estate agent who doesn't want to build a formal, traditional in-house real estate team structure. And what they decide to do is find a handful of or a, a number of agents that are willing to work for them for all of the spillage that they have in terms of additional business that they don't have the ability to service on a favorable split to the team lead. Now, in many cases, the agents that are helping service the team lead, they still run their own business wholeheartedly separate from the team business structure. Now, this, in my opinion, is a really great stepping stone for team leaders. It's a really great additional surplus to people that are willing to service that business that are looking for more opportunities for income. Although I don't feel like it's a very good long term solution for a team leaders business simply because you can't heavily invest in the agents that you are having service your business. And if there is not a push at a pull, a give at a take, then it ends up becoming transactional. And it also becomes a push pull in terms of the agents that are leading the spillage, in essence, the additional team leads business. There's a conflict between should I run my own business at 100% commission or should I run the team leads business at a 50-50 split? And then there's a little bit of a conflict of interest based on the volume that they will service, etc. Next on the list is virtual teams or national teams, what some people call them. And what this essentially is, where a team leader has a very strong network or a very strong system or a very strong online presence, perhaps maybe a big YouTuber. And what they will do is build a traditional team, but then they expand their umbrella to other markets. So if there's somebody in New York and they open a team in Miami, they might run a traditional team in two different market centers where, where they will collect, you know, a commission split on both teams because they are essentially running the systems. They are training everybody. They are offering lead generation and support, etc. Next on the list is an expansion team. An expansion team is essentially a revenue share group, perhaps like what you would see at eXp Realty or Real Broker or LPT, some of these sort of multi-level marketing type of companies. Or you might also consider it somebody who runs multiple different franchises, for example, at a Remax or a Century 21. And essentially what this is, is you working on the brokerage side of the business, you working on growing the brokerage side of the business and you growing a volume of agents and making sure from a bird's eye view that all of the agents are plugged into the systems that you offer to them and that you have really great systems in place in terms of training, support, collaboration, culture, etc. When it comes to choosing the right real estate team structure, there are so many factors at play. There are a lot of really, really, really great real estate teams out there, but there are a lot of really, really, really bad real estate team structures out there. And it really, there's a lot of factors at play. What is going on in the current real estate market in the landscape? What is the real estate team dynamic and do they have good opportunities for you to come take part in and grow? What sort of CRM systems did they have in place? What 
sort of staffing do they have in place? What sort of technology do they have in place? And what are the future trends when it comes to building real estate teams? Because we know that there's a lot of talk going on right now with lawsuits and real estate commissions. And in my opinion, it's the agents and teams that go out and take a lot of listings that are going to control the market as typically, but more now than ever. So real estate teams are going to become more and more and more relevant as market share continues to be a factor at play. If you want my two cents on your scenario, feel free to send me an email. My info is in the description below. And otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on this video next. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a fantastic day.